Do you constantly have high RAM uses on your computer, whether it's when you're playing games, streaming, or just using your desktop on a day-to-day -day basis? High RAM uses can do things like slow down your PC, make your games laggy, make pages take longer to load, just in general make your PC sluggish and a pain to use. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys a Windows Sys internal tool that is free to use and easy to use. And near the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to automate clearing your RAM cache, which pretty much clears all of your non-used RAM to allow more RAM to be allocated to applications that you're currently using. So the tool is called RAM Map, and that's the tool that I'm going to be going over in this video. I have a link down in the description to take you to this web page so we can learn all about it. But pretty much, I'm just going to read it off the page. RAM Map is, a, is used to gain understanding of the way that Windows manages memory, to analyze application memory usage, or answer specific questions about how it's being allocated. And what it doesn't include in here is that you can actually clear the unused RAM. So make sure you remember where you actually download RAM map because that will be useful to us when we open it up. So I installed mine in my downloads folder. So depending on where it is, most likely it will be your downloads folder, but you can choose wherever you want to download it. So what you want to do is there will be an, uh, a zip file. You're going to want to go ahead and extract all and you can choose where you want to extract the folder. So then you will have a folder that is called RAM map and inside it you will see uh, RAM map.exe and RAM map uh, 64, pretty much the 64 bit version, 32 bit version. We're going to go ahead and open it up, and you will be prompted for a user uh, access uh, control, pretty much because it is uh, actually, you know, it shows your RAM allocation, so you will need administrator privileges to use this application. Once it's opened up, you can see use counts, um, active standby total. Uh, this is pretty much a way to see where your RAM is being allocated, if it's uh, being cached or if it's being used. We're not really going to go over too much um, about where, like how to view where uh, where RAM's, RAM is being allocated because you can view that on um, Task Manager. So pretty much um, it has a bunch of pages where you can see uh, RAM usage. But what we're really interested in is when you go to empty. Empty can go ahead and, uh, as you can see, empty working sets, system working sets, modified page list, standby list, priority zero standby list. So these are pretty much uh, different categories that your RAM is being allocated to. And you can go ahead and clear the unused RAM by pushing these buttons. So to go ahead and show you while I do this, <clears throat> um, I have uh, Rust open right here just so it can I can uh, use more RAM just for uh, this specific use case. So as you guys can see, I have 62% RAM usage, which is not too bad for a normal user, but sometimes if it gets up to 100, that can be uh, very bad and can make your PC sluggish. So let's go ahead and press empty working sets. So as you guys can see, it will uh, delete cached RAM. So as you can see, if you go look to your cached RAM, it is getting rid of a lot of it because a lot of your currently using used applications are caching RAM, uh, just in case you are still using those applications. So applications that are running in the background sometimes use up a lot of cached RAM. Um, so let's say I do working sets, we can go ahead and do all of them. And this sometimes temporarily for a second, if you're especially if you're using the uh, graphical user interface will uh, lag the actual RAM map application. It won't lag your actual computer, it shouldn't at least um, so if you go ahead and press all of these, you can see the RAM is slowly going down and ca these categories, some categories are using more RAM than others. So not every category is going to get rid of the same amount of RAM working sets is usually, I think working sets and standby are the main two that take up the most RAM. So as you can see, I went from 62% to 38% usage. So we almost cut the RAM usage in half. So that's cool and all, but you have to open up this application and press these buttons, which you don't want to do that on a day to day basis. But there is a solution to this. So what you are going to want to do is go to your search bar or press control R, however you want to do it. Type in CMD command prompt, run as administrator. Go ahead and open it up and you'll be in the system 32 folder. Um, so now you want to go and navigate to whatever folder you downloaded the RAM map uh, uh, application in. For, for me, it will be downloads. So if it's downloads, you're going to do CD change directory. Um, let's say you put it in like in C slash users, you would put whatever file path it is. And if you don't know what you can do is you can right click the folder and press copy as path. And then you can go over to your command prompt. You press, you do CD and then you can right click and it will go ahead and paste the path to 
the file or if you don't want to do that if it's in your downloads folder you can do user profile percent and then slash downloads so we are in the downloads folder and then cd ram map so now we are in that current directory and we have these folders so if you guys want to see what is actually in that folder you can do dir which lists the current applic or current files in that directory so we're going to go ahead and want to run ram map so what we're doing is command line uh, flags so flags are pretty much commands you can use uh, with applications to use the application without the graphical user interface so let's do slash question mark as you can see there is going to be a ram usage uh, ram map usage window that pops up and we're going to focus on command line mode which is what we're going to be using so you can see uh, dash capital e w empty working set so these are the exact same things that we were just using the application for so let's go ahead and test this. We'll have our task manager open. Performance. So while my RAM is still uh, not very high, it will go down a little bit so you can see that it's working. So let's go ahead and type rammap.exe. And if you want, to, if you don't want to type the whole exe path, you can just say like the first letter of it. You can do RA and then press tab, which will fill it in for you. And now we want to do dash EW. So let's go ahead and look at the screen right here. And as you can see, without any user interface, we are taking our usage down. So now you might be thinking, why would I want to enter these commands when I can use the graphical interface? Well, Windows has a thing called Task Scheduler, which is an application that is used to run tasks whenever a condition is met. For example, when your system starts up, some applications need to start up. Sometimes things are used by Task Scheduler to start updates do things like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on task scheduler library. We're going to create basic task. You can name this whatever you want. I'm going to name it Ram map one because I already have a task for this. So our trigger is going to be, um, let's say when we, when I log, ah, let's do when the computer starts on startup, we're going to start a program and then the program or script, you can go ahead and press browse or, do whatever you would like. So we can do user profile, downloads, slash RAM map. Um, or you could do that copy as path and paste it in. So the application we want to run is RAM map.exe. We're going to go ahead and double click that. So as you can see, it is pasted that into your program slash script. Now add arguments is going to go ahead and be where we want to put that dash E W right there. Now you're going to want to head and press next. Um, and then we're going to want to press open property dialog when I press finish. So, cause you're not finished yet. So that went ahead and made that task. So now this is the task properties. So what you're going to want to do first is I would do run only when the user is logged on, meaning you have to be logged in and using the computer for this to run because it would be pretty useless if nothing's happening on your computer. So you might as well just do it when you're logged on and we're going to press run with highest privileges. And then what we're going to do is configure for windows 10. You may be on windows 11. You could still press the windows 10 option. I'm on windows 11. So we can go ahead and go to triggers. Uh, we're going to go ahead and press uh, the trigger and press edit. And now we already have that startup, but we don't want it to just do it one time. We want it to do it every every five minutes is what I normally do, but you can do it as often as you want. So we could do, we're going to press repeat task every, we're going to say five minutes. I don't know if you can make it any shorter than that for a duration of indefinitely. So once your computer starts up, this task will be ran. In five minutes after that, it'll be ran again and again and again until you shut off your computer, start it up again, process repeats. So that's go that's what we're going to go ahead and set it for you can set it for however long you want we're going to press ok so now that we're done with triggers we're going to go over to action and as you can see we already have the working set uh argument but for this application you can't use multiple arguments so we will have to make a, a uh a action for each of the arguments so we're going to want to copy the script or the program we're going to want to press new we're going to want to paste that back in there. And now we're going to want to do that for each of these uh, arguments. So we'll do dash ES. We'll say, say OK. 
So those are all of the arguments. So it is gonna run five times individually and clear the working sets in the background. I don't believe we edit the conditions. Yeah, so all that will be fine. We'll go ahead and press okay. After you do this, you might wanna restart your computer to get the first, um, the first actual action to start. So I'll do that and I'll be right back. So now that we have restarted our system, go ahead and open up task scheduler once again. And you guys can see that the, um, oh, it says task is currently running. I did start my system up five minutes ago, so it is running again. But once you start it up, it should say the operation completed successfully. If it says um, this operation uh, could not be completed for specific reason, it could be because it was uh, blocked or something like that. It could be because of the run with highest privileges being turned off. So making sure that is turned on. Um, along with that, uh, make sure that it is uh, when you are logged in. Um, if it does fail though, what I would do is manually run it and make sure that it runs properly. If not, I would watch back through the video, make sure you do follow those steps uh, because it does work as long as your user profile has administrative privileges, which it most likely will if it's a home computer. But now you have a RAM cache clearer that runs every five minutes. So if you're doing homework, playing games, doing whatever, it'll be running in the background and you will not notice a thing and it'll be clearing your cache so you have more RAM available. So if this helps you guys out, make sure to like this video and subscribe. Let me know if you guys actually like these, uh, like these types of videos. I plan on doing more of them. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.